Hey everyone, it's Laura. We're back on Thrive with PKU today and we're continuing that question series where I'm answering questions from the Thriving with PKU audience. So today I was asked actually by a few different young women to just talk about my pregnancy. So right now I'm just a few weeks away from meeting our baby girl. It's my first pregnancy and if you're unfamiliar, the reason why pregnancy with women with PKU is such a big deal is that if your fee levels are not in a controlled range, then it could hurt your developing baby. Um, so definitely important to have those levels in range. So the first thing I'll say before I talk about my experience is just that if you are a woman with PKU who's thinking about becoming pregnant or you are pregnant, just make sure you're talking with your clinic because they have the best medical advice for you. And if you don't have a clinic and you need to get in contact with one, I'm going to put a link down in the, des the description box below from the National PKU Alliance that just lists out all the uh, clinics that are in the United States. So hopefully that will be a helpful resource for, for all of you. So uh, my pregnancy, first of all, I'll go all the way back to even becoming pregnant. Um, my husband and I actually didn't know if we wanted to have our own children because of the risk involved with PKU. I think that a lot of doctors had just warned me so much throughout my life just to be careful about um, not getting pregnant when I was not, when my fee levels were not prepared, but I kind of took it in my mind as that, that there was no way to have a healthy PKU pregnancy, which is not true. Um, so my husband and I actually thought we were going to adopt for, for a long time. And then I don't really know what changed our minds. My mom has always been so encouraging, like, no, we can, like, you can have your own children. I'll help you through it. I'll help you cook meals and all that stuff. So I know that my mom's encouragement was really big for me to kind of be like, okay, I can do this. It just has to, I just have to go about it in a safe way. So um, I started what was called pre-con. That's what my clinic called it. It's basically preconception on the PKU diet. That means you want to get pregnant. You're thinking about it. You're trying to get your levels down to whatever the safe range is that your clinic says before getting pregnant. And some, um, some clinics suggest a different amount of time to do pre-con for, and I did pre-con for about six months before um, I got pregnant. And I have to say it was tricky because I was used to having a safe uh, fee level, but kind of on the higher end of the safe fee levels. So then I had to get it down to the lower end of safe fee levels. And that meant eating less protein every day. So what helped me a lot was taking formula all throughout the day, spreading it out as much as I could so that I wasn't feeling super, super hungry all the time, which was my most, like my biggest complaint during pre-con was just feeling so hungry. Um, I snacked on everything. I decided with my clinic to switch to the simplified diet, which meant I could count some fruits and some vegetables as free, which helped me because I do not like feeling limited, especially when I'm feeling hungry so much during pre-con. So I, I just loved being able to take out some carrots and celery and just like snack nonstop. Um, the other thing that got me through pre-con was just like not eating out. <laughs> I couldn't eat out the way I did before. And um, I, I mean, when you don't know the food that's being prepared and you are being very strict about trying to get your levels down, it can be really frustrating. Um, I know there were some nights where I'd get home from work and be like, man, I don't want to cook. It'd be so nice to go get something um, just out at a restaurant or something. But if I don't know exactly how much protein is in the things that they serve, which a lot of times you don't unless it's a chain restaurant and you can look up the, the protein or whatever, um, then it, for me, it was best to just stay away from it. Um, trying to think what else really helped me during that time. A uh, scale, the, my scale was huge for me. Prior to pre-con, I was not weighing out my food or being very disciplined about measuring out my food. And I kind of got to a place with pre-con where I figured out I am not going to be successful eyeballing this. I have to measure things out. I have to weigh things out. My scale, it was just a little one. Um, I think I got it on like Amazon. I weighed out everything and I used howmuchfee.org, which helped me a lot too, because you can just weigh something out. Like if I'm having potatoes, I could weigh something out, 26 grams of potatoes, plug it into howmuchfee.org, uh, and it, give, it would give me the exact protein amount uh, calculated for me. No math involved, which makes me happy. Um, so 
Then after pre-con was done, I found out I was pregnant. My levels, this, this just happened for me and I've, I've talked to so many different women who have had um, children and sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't, but my levels dipped significantly when I got pregnant, um, like two very, very low amounts where my hair was falling out, it wasn't good. So I was able to increase in protein almost immediately to try to get those levels up because this baby in here is apparently a little carnivore and she was uh, taking the protein needing it for growth. So that was, I mean, really exciting at the beginning, but then I started to get very, very sick. So at the very beginning, it was just feeling nauseous all the time, drinking formula and feeling nauseous and um, the actual losing my formula <laughs> didn't come till later. But I'd say formula for me was the hardest thing during, um, well, for me it was the first and second trimester that was the morning sickness. And um, formula was a huge challenge. So I would suggest anyone who's struggling with formula be open to, will, or be open to you know, talking to your clinic and seeing if they have other formulas that you might be able to switch to. Sometimes that helps if that particular flavor or whatever it is isn't working with you. I changed how I took my formula probably 25 times throughout um, some days it would be I would take it and chase it with a pickle and that worked for a little bit and then that would make me throw up. So then I would mix it into a smoothie and then that would work for a week and then that would make me feel sick. So it was just this constant, um, just trial and error. And my, my sweet Mr. Hines, he was always the one um, trying to help me. I literally for months had to make him make my formula. He made it for me because just making it would make me gag. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, and that was a really, really, I have to say that was the most challenging time beyond anything else. I thought pre-con was hard and then I got to the first trimester and was like, oh no, this is way harder. Because when you're weighing out everything you eat and then you get sick, you have to figure out or try to guess. I can't weigh out everything I just threw up. So I mean, trying to figure out how much protein I actually got compared to how much I lost. It was just kind of this uh, really chaotic time and my clinic just encouraged me to keep going, that it would be over soon, it'd be over soon. So I got to 12 weeks thinking, okay, it's gonna be over soon. And it was not over <laughs> for many, many weeks after that. So um, just know it's gonna be okay. You just continue taking your levels, continue taking your fee level as often as your state or whatever will allow you um, so that you can have a good uh, gauge of, of where you're at if you're getting sick um, through your pregnancy too. And we'll just pray that anyone who is pregnant right now or wants to become pregnant, that that will not happen to you at all. Um, so I have to say, as soon as I stopped getting sick, um, pregnancy got so much easier. A lot of, some women um, are able to increase in protein as their babies grow, and that has happened uh, with me, I've like, I think I've doubled or tripled in the amount of protein I'm needing now because the baby's taking it and, and growing so much. Uh, but that is not the case for everyone. Um, and I have to say, I am to the point right now in my pregnancy where I'm getting worried because I'm like, gosh, after pregnancy, it's I'm gonna have to go down in protein again. Like I'm trying things that I've never been able to get to try before and it's been fun, but I'm also, a little worried because there are things I've never tried before for a reason and it's been good not knowing how some things taste because now I know and I've been opened up to the other side but um, anyways pregnancy has been it's been hard I have to say I've been with a high-risk doctor this whole time a high-risk OBGYN doctor and uh, when I first met my high-risk doctor they called me a rare unicorn because they had never met anyone with PKU before um, my husband and I <laughs> walked out of the office and saw the doctor and all of the nurses around a computer like Googling PKU. <laughs> we were like, okay, that's not super encouraging. But then my high-risk doctors that I was sent to um, have been very, very knowledgeable. I was given a um, kind of like a master plan of um, additional protocol that they would do additional screening, additional blood tests, additional ultrasounds that they would do on the baby um, to make sure that everything was going okay. And at first, I have to say that I freaked out. I was newly pregnant when I got this 
this master plan of additional things on top of a typical pregnancy. Um, and I, it kind of hit me like, oh my gosh, if I am not controlled, I can hurt my child. And um, I mean, I hadn't always known that, but it just became real when I saw how much additional screening they were doing. And I was just thinking there has to be a reason for it. Um, but now my husband and I try to look at it as, well, we get to see our baby so much. We've seen, we've had so many ultrasounds getting to see her throughout the whole pregnancy, which has been really cool. And my other friends that are pregnant that don't have PKU, they've seen their baby, I mean, just a few times throughout their pregnancy. I get to see her all the time. <laughs> so that has been something that we've tried to look at it as just like a, it's a blessing getting to see her as often as we're, as we are able to. And that wouldn't be really possible if PKO uh, wasn't a thing. Oh, excuse my phone. Um, but anyways, my advice for anyone who wants to have a child, wants to go through this pre-con phase, um, is just to stick with it. You can do it. Work with your clinic. They know best. I would also say on top of that, I really, um, for me, whenever my clinic tells me something, I see them, yes, they are the medical professionals, I need to listen to them, but I also enjoy researching on my own um, just to know, you know, what, why these decisions are being made or whatever it may be. So that's something that I've really enjoyed and that I would suggest to other people. Um, the pre-con phase before getting pregnant can be really tricky, but I know I've, I've talked to some women who it's taken them years to get their levels down or just a few months. and. I think that um, the best thing I can say to anyone doing pre-con right now is just that when you do become pregnant, at least for me, it um, it was all so worth it already that I, I realized I would have done this. I would do that for years so that my baby could be healthy. Excuse me, healthy. I'm going to start choking up talking about this. And I just think that, um, I mean, all those mommies with PKU, uh, I mean, it's, I think it's so special because you've put so much work into having a child as it is. And what a lucky kid you have that, you know, for you to love him so much to um, just go through some really tricky times um, just so that, that they can be healthy. Um, so anyways, I wish you all luck. And uh, I will for sure introduce you guys to our little baby girl. We know what her name's gonna be. I'm not gonna share it yet though, but we're so excited. Um, to meet her and to introduce her to all of you. So just to remind you guys, next week we'll be back on Tuesday answering another question. If you have a question for me, I've got a long list <laughs> forming, but you can feel free to comment it in the comments below. You can send it to me um, through Instagram or Facebook if you have me on social media. And I will see all of you next week on Thriving PKO. Bye.